Okay guys, so we are playing another video against our new friends, so let's go with the Karakan. Okay, so we are playing C6 and let's go D5, I guess you would maybe exchange or go for the two knights variation. So, Bishop G4 against H3 I'm going to take, then play uh, E6. Okay, so basically, uh, let's go e6. I guess now we may be going to play h3 because this is the theoretical line. But also, you can uh, uh, go for the move uh, e5. But this is actually going to go for us because our bishop is already out. So um, we are basically ready to uh, prepare uh, c5 if he's going to play e5. If he's going for h3, I'm going to take the knight and play knight f6. Okay, so for now, um, let's play knight f6. We want to provoke e5, then move the knight back and try to go for uh, c5 immediately. Okay, also notice that in this position we got two, two attackers again this pawn. So this is also an idea that sometimes you can just uh, win a free pawn. Now we're uh, moving the knight back. We are ready to take this knight, of course. Okay, so basically the idea we can already go for a c5. The downside is that uh, he's got knight b5 with a very annoying square of uh, of an outpost, which 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 comes with a check. So in this position, you might be end up in a very nasty fork or losing your Dobbsburg bishop, which you don't really want to allow. So <coughs> playing a move like uh, a6. It of course makes sense um, because again we don't really want to allow that okay so yeah basically playing the move like a6 also preventing from the knight or the bishop to enter the position and if you are a Kalkan player just notice that this is a soft position for you so be mindful of that Okay, so we are slightly delaying the, the, the c5 break, but we are going to play it eventually. And also uh, notice that uh, exchanges, this, exchanges this knight for uh, this bishop. Basically, not, not going to be so, uh, completely scary because this, this diagonal is not uh, really scary for us, for now at least. Okay, so let's push, and as you see, no infiltration ideas. And I guess we want to take the knight soon enough because uh, if we're going to take this pawn, he can take with the knight. And then I'm not really convinced that the uh, back is better in this position. So before committing to this pawn, basically we can develop a piece or two. But the idea is that we want to take this knight. We don't really want to allow the knight to control any of those two squares because we want to break the center as black and try to win the center completely. And of course, go, go for the attack. Okay, so he developed his bishop to e3, and of course, again, you don't want to take and allow this knight to control uh, in this important square. Um, also, developing the knight uh, to c6 makes sense. Um, basically, after he take, I can take, we can have some uh, exchanges. So, basically, developing the knight before taking is also idea, but I think it's more accurate to take this knight. Um, with the exchange on, with this bishop on his diagonal, taking the pawn is taking with his bishop and then knight to c6 with the tempo on his bishop. I think this is the most accurate way to play. Because now as you see, uh, this bishop <coughs> is basically acting like a pawn. We, we develop the knight with the tempo on his bishop. And if he's going to allow you to take the bishop uh, and, uh, and you're going to take with the knight, uh, he's going to take with the queen and then you can play um, your bishop to c5, supported by this knight, with a tempo on the queen and a very strong diagonal on f2, and then maybe even a queen h4, for example. So we got many ideas. Okay, as you see, it's also it's going to be a liability to protect e4, uh, e5. Sorry, um, and yeah, uh, we are starting to slowly but carefully build some pressure on the position. We can put a rook on the c file. <coughs> We can go uh, 
bishop e7, bishop b4. Uh, we got plenty of ideas, but again, I don't want to commit anything before I know exactly what his, uh, his plans are. Okay, and as you see, this um, a small move playing a6 uh, is necessary because uh, knight uh, b5, knight d6 is a very nasty square for the knight. It can also control a very dangerous fork between the king and the rook in, in case that you are uh, moving your queen. And you don't really want to give up your bishop. I mean, basically, uh, most likely that you are going to win this pawn anyway after the exchange, but uh, bishop on g7 is going to uh, make you lose another pawn. So, um, if you are allowing uh, the move b5, you need to be completely prepared for that. Uh, you don't really have to play a6, of course, but uh, you need to do. You need you need to understand what you're doing, and you need to make sure that your bishop is in block in case he's jumped to this uh, d6 square, because then after a check, you might be in a worse. Okay, so uh, rook to e3. Now, as you see, uh, now we can go with the original plan of taking this bishop, and we have a very nice tempo, and we are going to win the exchange. Okay, so bishop c5, which was the original plan, of course, supported with the knight, and gaining a tempo on the rook. Now, uh, of course, that I want to play a move like h5, but uh, I don't really want to allow him to take on uh, g7. So he's got a very nice counter attack. Um, yeah, so it seems like we must take this rook. But then I want to ask myself, um, maybe we can also take this pawn. But yeah, we can't really allow ourselves to lose uh, to do, to lose this rook because it's come with the check. It will come with the tempo on this uh, knight. So basically, taking the rook is a must. He can in this position also go for uh, g7. Yeah. So this is actually a very nice uh, idea by him. Uh, basically, if we're going to lose this pawn anyway, we can immediately just uh, take. Um, yeah, in this position, I'm regretting. Maybe I can go play it a bit differently, but no, I think it, I think it's fine. Okay, so let's take with the check. If you're going to lose the the bishop anyway, <coughs> uh, let's make the best of it. Uh, we can also go with another check. If you push, I take. Um, we can also. Okay, so basically I got an amazing idea. We can go with check. I guess he will try to block. And then I get another check. And I can take this pawn. I will be supported by the knight. And I will also cover my rook completely. So in case he's going to take, I'm going to take the knight. And if he's going to take the rook, I can take with the queen. So this is actually a very amazing uh, idea. He can also block. Blocking the, the check with the queen is completely fine. But... Um, being up the exchange, uh, I do believe that uh, we are winning. Okay, uh, notice that we got uh, some more time. Uh, he did mention that uh, he's playing uh, a longer game, so uh, playing 10 minutes game it can be quite stressful. So I'm used to play 10 minutes because sometimes when I'm playing uh, uh, 40 minutes games, I guess that uh, just lose con uh, concentration eventually. So um, I'm used to the 10 minutes games. It feels like it's really efficient, but again, uh, on those high levels, um, sometimes you, you need uh, way more. <coughs> okay, now even though this position is a bit scary, our king is in the center, we did in castle, uh, it feels like our position is a bit compromised, but to be honest, to be fair, uh, we are completely okay. If he's going to offer us a queen exchange, we can take and then put a rook on the g file, put a rook on the c file. Okay, so now we can go with the immediate plan, giving another check. <coughs> and now we can take this pawn. Again, uh, taking this pawn with the queen, you're also guarding this rook. So this is a win-win situation for us. You cannot really take the rook. 
If you take the queen, I'm going to take with the knight. I'm going to have a tempo on the bishop. I can also jump to a very nice outpost uh, on c4 or maybe even c6. So basically, this is completely winning for us. But yeah, he played it uh, well, but it's it's really uh, not not so easy to play against those positions because um, I will show you after the game, but basically the Karakhan has an uh, amazing counterplay. Okay, so for now we can also play h5 with the tempo uh, on the queen. We can also go uh, knight f6. <clears throat> this is also an idea. Um, rook... Um, Rook c8. I guess I like the idea of knight f6 because it's also come with the preparation of uh, rook g8 and we can maybe try to put the pressure on this position. Downside is that uh, this position is also guarded by his bishop. So, yeah, it's not going to be quite easy to, to take advantage of that. Okay, but I think for now this is a nice plan. We are also uh, providing another defender <coughs> to uh, d5. Okay, so a check. Basically, I can block. Uh, if it takes, I take. I'm going to lose the rook, so we're not going to fall for that, of course. Um, I can put the king in the center. If he's going to give me a check, I can just basically defend. I don't want to play uh, king f8 because... Um, I don't really want to disconnect the rook, so I guess playing the move like king e7 makes sense. Okay, so now I can defend. Oh, I can lose this pawn on the b5. Yeah, I kind of miss that. I kind of miss that. Mm, okay, yeah, that's on me. I did I did miss the the check with the with the grabbing of the pawn. Uh, okay, so let's defend after he's taken. I guess I will probably block with the knight. You don't want to move your king because then you're going to lose the rook for nothing. So basically, I can deflect with the with the queen or maybe with the knight. Um, okay, so let's let's just defend with the queen. Okay, so I guess he will try to play for a draw, but there's no need to. Uh, to play for a draw. Okay, we don't really want to play for a draw, we want to uh, go for the win. Okay, so now if I'm going to go back, it's going to be uh, back and forth and I don't want to draw, so let's move the knight back. And <coughs> basically we lost this pawn, which is on me completely, I completely missed that. Uh, but still our position is good. Now we need to be careful because in this position you can try to take and our uh, pawn is pinned to the king. So we need to be careful not to blunder that of course. So what's the top move? Basically, basically we can try to maybe put more pressure um, on his queen and then maybe even um, put the king in a safe position. So. Yeah, we need to be extremely careful not to blunder this pawn because then we are going to be in a great disadvantage. And of course, playing any king moves aren't going to be good. Uh, playing the king to f6, um, I guess it's a move, but a dangerous one. Okay, so let's connect the rooks with the tempo on the queen. And now I can also drop the king back. And as you see, my rooks are connected, and my king is going. My queen, sorry, is going to protect my square. So it it doesn't feel like I can immediately go for the checkmate, <coughs> but we are up the exchange, and uh, we're up on the clock. Okay, so he's going for the pawn, and we need to be careful about this uh, this rook, of course. So I think we must take. <clears throat> yeah, so we found a very, very nice counterplay. Okay, we need to not lose this rook, of course. 
Now we can also try to deck this knight if he is not careful. But yeah, I kind of misplayed it. I guess... Basically... I guess basically knight f6 was a mistake. Um, and yeah, blockading the check with the knight was better. So I was more... Um, more busy about occupying the g file with my rook in order to try to go for the checkmate and yes and completely compromise my diagonal so this is completely on me of course we are still okay we don't want to blunder this rook of course so let's drop the rook on a7 and yeah he's, he's fighting uh, quite well i must say he's really really fighting he's, he doesn't really want to give up which um, it's really important if you want to be a very strong chess player, of course. Okay, so <clears throat> b6, now I guess we can put pressure on this knight. Okay, I guess he will try to pressure my knight as well, so we need to be mindful of that. And I can also maybe double up. Makes sense. We can also try to go for the checkmate if he's not careful. And again, he's, he's fighting quite well. I did mess up my position completely. Um, after playing knight f6, I didn't really consider this diagonal, but yeah. Okay, so of course he doesn't really want to uh, allow us to, um, to go for the mate. So I guess we can just grab a pawn. Uh, no reason not to do that. Actually, taking the pawn, he can take the knight. I can take and then he's got a check and he can win my rook. Not exactly the end of the world, but uh, I'm not really sure that I want to allow that. Yeah, but I guess it's still winning and he doesn't really have enough time. But yeah, he can basically take. Okay, so no, he doesn't take. Um, Okay, let's move the rook. And yeah, we have a very nice fork between his pieces. So, we still cannot take the knight, of course, but let's still improve the position. Basically, we have more time on the clock. Okay, and that's GG, uh, very very nice game, GG well played.